In our previous videos, we've seen how we can use Hibernate to query our database. Now in this video, we're going to see how we can get some results and we can apply them to a Prime Faces data table. So a data table in its simplest form is going to have these components, ID, year, brand, color, like we see. So these are essentially the properties of a class. The class in our case is going to be plant, and the properties might be genus, species, cultivar, common, so on and so forth. So for this, we simply need the P, data table tag, and then we have a var car. That means this is a variable that we're going to store the results into. And then value, this is a bound uh, component that basically says we want to pull out of the collection called DT basic views, and then the that's that's a managed bean, and then the property cars on that is a list of cars. Then we have the P column attributes, which represents each of these individual columns we're going to show on our screen. So let's remember how things work at the moment. We have our plant places application, and I'll open up a new window here, and we'll say uh, localhost and then plant places. That's going to give us a search screen, and currently it just kind of goes when we type in a search. If I say maybe red bud, or we'll just say red, and I hit submit, it's going to go to a screen right now that doesn't have any logic behind it. It just uh, basically shows some results. Now, first things first, I realize that the page is broken. When I hit submit, nothing happens. I come back over and take a look at Eclipse, and I see an error. And the error says there's a null pointer exception on the filter plants where it's trying to do the autocomplete. Okay. Well, okay, that actually kind of makes sense because we used to fill this in with a stub. And if you take a look at the stub, we just hard coded in a series of plants that would get returned. Okay. Well, remember, we're not using the stub anymore. Why not? Well, if we take a look at application context, our spring file, let's remember what we did in a previous video. We said whenever we want to use the plant DAO, let's use the plant HBM DAO, which is our Hibernate class. We specify this explicitly in our application context. And after that, we do the component scan of the com.plantplaces package. Now, what does this all mean? What it means is uh, spring is immutable. So once we assign a value to a bean, if a future assignment comes up, the first assignment will always win. We can't override or overwrite that first assignment. So what we did in a previous video is we stopped using our stub, which has those hard-coded values, and we started using Hibernate. Now let's take a look at our stub, public list plant fetch plants. Okay, let's take a look at the Hibernate version, public list plant fetch plants, we're returning null, hence our null pointer exception. But guess what? Uh, the news isn't too bad because we can copy, let me control M so we can see this in high def. We can copy some of the work that we did in our fetch plants parameterized method, and we can reapply it in the method that does not have a parameter. In other words, remember what overloading is, overloading a method. Overloading a method means we have two methods with the same name, but a different parameter list. In our last video, we worked on this parameter. And we said, let's select from the database where a plant has a common name that's specified in this parameter. Well, the fetch plants method without a parameter, the idea here is we should return all plants. So let's make some adjustments here. First of all, we'll copy the work we've done up here. Okay, and I'm going to paste it right up here. If we want to return a list of all plants, uh, it's going to be fairly easy. Uh, we don't need to set a parameter. And so I'm going to take out these two lines here, and I'm going to take out the parameter in my query, and it's just going to be from plant. So that means return all plants. Okay, and save. And essentially, that's all we need to do. Just select everything from plant. Don't specify a parameter to limit the results, so we'll get all results. Okay, you see it automatically runs my unit test because we have the JUnit Flux perspective set up. 
the J unit flux nature. Uh, everything's looking very good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to redeploy and we'll see if we get that page working. I've redeployed the application and now let's take a look. I'm going to start typing red and you notice that the autocomplete is now working. We have our Circus Canadensis red button, our Chinese red button, and even our Pleasant Ridge red oak when I start typing red. Now we currently have this hard-coded so that if I type in the word red bud, it will take me to a results page. Kind of a silly looking results page right now, but uh, this is the one that we're going to enhance a bit. On the other hand, if I type in anything that is not red bud, uh, it is going to take me to a no results found page. So this is something that we're going to be able to clean up uh, in just a moment. But for now, we've seen how we can use Hibernate to return all results from a query because we see if I type in a simple short phrase like red, it is auto-completing. If I type in E, we'll even see it's auto-completing with all of the plants that are in our database that have the letter E, which is almost all of the plants. So that'll wrap it up for this video. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how we can wire this from this page all the way down, and we no longer deal with the dummied results of we have to type in red bud to go to the results screen. In other words, in the next video, we're going to see how we can use live data to determine whether or not we have results. I look forward to seeing you then.